Oh, you want me to cover GDC, do you? You want me to have to traipse back and forth for hours across a crowded show floor looking for one couch out of the thousands visible that it would be socially acceptable to sit on? You want me to leave the house and meet other human beings so that in the future when I inevitably need to urinate all over their games, I have to suppress feelings of shame as well as the usual self-loathing and urge to masturbate? You want me to interact with other people from my peer group in an environment of mutual interest and respect in order to make friends and regain a sense of perspective and self-worth? Christ, you sound just like my wife! And my therapist! And that mouthy dude at the 7-Eleven! Well, sorry to disappoint, but I have misanthropic shut-in things to do, so if you don't mind, I'm just gonna walk out of shot to the left. Oh, fuck. Hi, we're at GDC. I guess. <laughs> Thanks for everyone making a big silly fuss over that global planet scarring plague thing, I hadn't done a convention since E3 in 2019. But now Covid is completely over, or at least we all collectively decided that the deaths weren't so bad weighed against how bored we were of hearing about it, cons are back on. Although in this case not without having to stand in line for two hours to get the vaccine card checked. GDC, I feel like you're forgetting about the essential con experience. Members of the press like me being able to flash a badge and walk straight past all the queues, floating a little air biscuit as I go. Well just so you know, once I finally got in I went straight to the media lounge and ate seven complimentary bagels. So I win. In contrast to E3, which is consumer focused and places a big emphasis on wowing random dumbos, GDC is more of an industry event, so instead of having to queue up outside entire fucking Halloween haunted houses erected on the show floor so you can play 10 minutes of the new Destiny expansion while being lit like the main stage at a strip club, there's instead 500 booths full of very earnest people wanting to talk about their indie games. And 500 more booths of companies pushing some new tech or development tools, trying to convince some of the very earnest people in the first group to make a hot app for their new force feedback buttock jigglers. Frankly though, we only got to the show floor on the last last day. Before that it was all one demo showcase after another, but because these were lower profile games they tended to be smaller intimate experiences where you're more likely to see an actually interesting game and the devs really want to win you over, hence the inevitable bowl of snacks. Which at first I would turn down out of politeness but by day three I'd learned to always take at least one thing because then when 2pm rolls around you can convince yourself you've actually had lunch. I can certainly recommend the experience if you're really really interested in seeing lots of different hotel rooms, maybe not if you don't like sprinting back and forth across downtown San Francisco to meet appointments at different hotels. Fortunately San Francisco Francisco said, oh you poor harassed journalists, here's some lovely sunny weather to ease your burden. On the first day. On the second day it pissed down, so Nick the editor was forced to call an Uber to cross three blocks and I was subsequently forced to call him a great big sook. You're a bipolar city aren't you San Francisco? Why'd you say that? Do you want to fight? Oh sorry I didn't mean that, I love you. Would you like some homeless person's excrement? No thank you San Francisco. 